So first is the Holy Spirit and He is a person. And we're also reading right now through our book and we're learning that not only Holy Spirit is a person but the Holy Spirit has a language. And this language is visions and dreams. Let me give it to you, there's just a simple version. Faith. God does not speak Spanish. He does not speak English. God speaks faith. The Bible says in Romans 4 17 that God calls those things which are not as though they are. What does that mean? That means God looks at something that doesn't exist and he talks about it as though it does. That is how God speaks. That's how he communicates. Most of our talk is not verbal. Words are only the clothes, if I could use that word. It's just the vocabulary that closes our thoughts. Our communication is always internal. Even when you drive in a car and nothing is coming out of your lips, you're talking. Statistics says, I don't know how they figured that statistic out. 70,000 thoughts go through your head every single day. That's more than words. And typically you speak about 25,000 words a day. If you're a lady and young, and if you're a man, it drops dramatically. dramatically. But thoughts you have about 70,000 thoughts every single day because you really communicate with yourself with thoughts not with words. You can be driving in a car and you're talking full speed. Nobody can hear you and what you're saying in that moment when no one hears you is really your language. Your language is not the one that you put on application, English or Spanish. Your language is the language that is inside of you that you talk to yourself when no one else hears. For some people their language is the language of I should have not done it, I should have done this, I should have, would have, could have. For some people it's the language constantly of doubt, the language of fear and the language of shame. For some people it's the language of defeat, the language of negativity and the language that always bad things happen to me and nothing ever good happens to me. For some people it's the language of insecurity and it's the language of worry. Anxiety or for some it's the language of depression. It's, it's constant dominating constantly flows inside of your mind. That is your language. Your spiritual language is the dominating thoughts that occupy your mind when you're alone. That's your language. The, the national, the, the language that we all speak, communicate with one another is English, Spanish. But the language that we have actually inside of us, it's the dominating thoughts that occupy your mind when you're alone. Dominating thoughts occupying your mind when you fall. Dominating thoughts occupy your mind when you try to do something and it fails. Dominating thoughts that occupy your mind when you're 27 and when you were 20 you thought you'll be married by 25. Those thoughts, that's your language. Dominating thoughts when you prayed and you thought everything is good. I don't feel that pain no more. You go back home and you realize that pain is still there. The dominating thought that occupies your mind inside of you. Nobody sees it and hears it but inside of you that is your language. Is that language language of faith or language of fear? This year is what we're learning. In order to communicate with God, you have to learn another language. And that's a language of faith. That means when you speak to God, you have to have images in your mind that line up with the desires of your heart. We all have desires inside of our hearts. To be happy, to be prosperous, to be in peace, to be overcomers, to be close to God. That is deep 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 in the heart but when it comes to the mind it I think the the junkyard over there in Pasco looks cleaner than some of our mind. The deep in our heart there is secret desires to be successful to achieve even if in our mind we believe God doesn't want you to be successful God doesn't want you to be prosperous but deep in the heart you believe in that you're just afraid to admit it to yourself Deep in your heart there's a dream but it doesn't line up with the one in your mind because the mental picture many times that is not the same as one it's here. 
I know how it was for me for many years when deep on the deep 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 on inside I wanted to be a person of influence I wanted to be a person who will impact other people who will who will bring people to Jesus who will pray for the sick and who will be married and who will you know have a house and have a car that's deep deep on inside but my mind was overloaded with images visions and convincing dominating thoughts I was no good I was worthless and I was born as an accident and people have never told me that my parents loved me I grew up in a good family everything was fine you know who told me that the devil I received it as my own and when I would be by myself that is the language I spoke but when that language would come to silence I would hear in my heart there's a bigger dream that contradicts what I see with my eyes, that contradicts what I feel with my emotions, that contradicts what people maybe are saying. That dream inside contradicts what actually the doctor's report is saying. It contradicts what I've experienced in the past. It contradicts the reality of the fact that this has never ever happened to me but it's still there and if it's there maybe perhaps God is trying to wake me up to say line up your thinking pattern with the deep dreams that place inside of you and see this is exactly what we need to understand to communicate with Holy Spirit you have to reach deep inside of your spirit don't pull up the headlines from your mind of the things that happened yesterday or things that happened 10 years ago or five years ago pull deep into your spirit and find the promise of God and that God has placed inside of you stop lying to yourself admit to yourself the things that you secretly wish would also belong to you God will make it reality it is God you communicated with when you're lining up your thoughts with your dreams. You may say, oh, this is God has nothing to do with that. Look throughout the Bible and you will see Jesus always complimented people's faith and always rebuked not people's sins but their unbelief. What is unbelief? It's when you trust what you see more than what you know. What you see with your physical eyes is of more importance than what you believe with your spiritual spiritual heart. That God is on your side. Everything will be alright and He will help you to get through. Can somebody say amen? And God wants us to learn this new language. This language is so hard to learn. Language of faith. And this language is not what you speak that you walk around saying, I am blessed, all is well, God is on my side. That's a, that's a Christianese and that's not hard to learn few months of coming to church and you'll start dropping those scriptures and walking around as though you know everything and on inside nothing can change. Amen. This language is a little bit harder to learn. Let's welcome Yura. How are you doing? Good. As you've noticed from one word that he said this brother is fresh <laughs> from the airplane. <laughs> he came to visit us from Ukraine. He's my cousin and he's working here. Very, very awesome young man. Uh, he's single. <laughs> so there's another reason why he came here, not just to make money, but that's not why he's here. And he's, he has positive, strong self-esteem. So this is not gonna destroy him completely. But as you can imagine that reading English does not come very easy for him. <laughs> There's many of you here that reading English won't come easy. But I didn't want to pull you out because it would look really bad for you. Because you live here. But he doesn't live here. He only lived here for... So about seven something months he's been in the United States so far. Okay. That's, that's pretty good time, right? Seven, seven, uh, seven months. Попробуй почитати з дев'ятого стиха. And he's going to read Acts chapter one, verse nine. Now, when he had spo spoken then six, uh, while well, they watched, he was taken up and could acquaint him uh, out. Uh, of the sing. You said you didn't know how to read English. <laughs> you lied to me. <laughs> this was supposed to be that you don't know how to read none of the English. Wow, that's pretty good. Just few sinking, sinking. We had one brother who would, uh, one of the Russian people, they cannot pronounce thinking, so they say sinking. 
I remember we had one gentleman who got up to preach and he said, he said, I was sinking and sinking. We're like, how did he survive that? How did he didn't drown? We're like, where did you, what were you drowning yesterday? He's like, no, I was sinking. We're like, oh, you were thinking. But did you see, I want you to see how Yura, though he studied in Ukraine English because you couldn't learn this in seven months, that's for sure. And you see how hard it was for him though he lives in America to learn the language of the United States. Just because you come to church that does not mean walking by faith will come instantly. It's almost like learning a new language. You first catch yourself and realize you're not good at it. Then you're trying to think one thought positive while two, two twenty twenty thousand are negative and you feel like you made a little accomplishment and then you look at the way other people are and you just feel like you're so behind. Learning to walk by faith. And what I mean by that is learning to inside the talk inside of you that you have. To be constantly lining up with God's word and positive things from God's word. is almost like picking up a new language and trying to learn it in one day. You will be discouraged but if you don't give up. When he finds a girl and gets married. Very soon, you will see, he's going to be reading this and throwing beats to it. Because all of us can learn a new language if we keep practicing it and don't give up. Can somebody say amen? Let's give a round of applause for you. Yura. People who have relationship with Holy Spirit are not those who don't make mistakes. They refuse to be conscious of them. People who have a relationship with Holy Spirit that's consistent are not those who don't have weaknesses. They're not conscious of them. When they made a mistake, they come to God and they say, Lord, forgive me. And God restores them. And from that moment on, they choose to be conscious of the righteousness. Not of the things they've done that were wrong five minutes ago. Many times the falls we take and the mistakes we make last from five to ten minutes. But the consciousness of them that we carry lasts from five to seven months. And it's not the mistake that destroys you. It's the fact it goes from your life and creeps into your mind and it stays there and it becomes your language. It becomes your inner language of guilt, shame and condemnation and that's why the Bible says kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let me know. If I want to be in the Holy Spirit, my mindset has to be on the things that are right, not on the things that I did wrong. And then it will lead to me having peace and it lead to me having joy. As long as I am conscious of my mistakes, of my past, of my weakness, of the things that can't be, of the things that shouldn't be, of the things that I don't deserve. As long as I am conscious of that, I and God cannot communicate freely. The same way you cannot communicate with someone who does not speak your native language. What you are going to do with God is what people do when my babushka does when she goes on yard sale. One, two, three, and six. I, this, hmm, three, thank you. That's all. And many people, that's the relationship with God. The way they know how to get hold of God. Oh God, I'm so worthless. I'm so stupid. I know God. I'm just so not good enough. And we twist the voice. We add tears to it. And the interesting part, and we start complaining. We start whining. And we feel good afterwards. Complaining is like throwing up. You always feel good and people around you get sick. Yeah. You walk around and you say, it felt so good, God must have touched me. God is so good, He's even merciful who will come and literally use sign language to communicate with Him. But we have to understand, if you come to church after some time, we have to learn to pick up, not Christianese, but faith. You might not know the Christian lingo. You might not know how to call me or a pastor. Instead of calling him pastor, you call him priest. 
like my friend Nufo. He's like, the mass was good on Sunday. I said, mass what? And I love that because see, Nufo does not know the Christian lingo. Most of us know Christian lingo, but we don't know faith. We don't know what to do when we are in a crisis and everything screams against us. God does not want you to learn Christian lingo. It's okay to keep calling your pastor priest. God bless you. You can call the church mass. It's completely okay. What's not okay is that you go through life and you keep speaking Christianese, but you don't know faith. You don't even know the glimpse of what it's like to walk by faith. Can somebody say amen? So relationship with Holy Spirit cannot go beyond our speaking His language and as we are reading in our home groups and we are learning that His language is not fears, His language is not nightmares, His language is dreams and visions. What is dreams and visions? And I'm not talking about the things you get at night and I'm not talking about the things that you know that somebody gives it to you. Dreams means the deep images of your heart. Dreams and vision means the things inside of you, the self-talk that you have. These are the language. This is faith. The woman who touched Jesus's hem of garment, the Bible says she said to herself, if I touch him, it's over. The interesting part is this, how did the person who was writing knew what she said to herself if she said to herself nobody heard her how did they know I don't know but I do know sooner or later what go goes inside of you everyone will know about it's not just about her it's about you too it's about me too sooner or later what's going on inside of you everyone will know about even Jesus will it will catch his attention the question is what are you saying inside of you that is the, your language that is your language yes you speak Spanish you speak English some of you speak other languages but inside of you make sure you have another language that you are learning at hungry generation language of faith instead of fear 